Uh, yeah, I'm um, Felix, uh, and I'm a postdoc at uh, KTH uh, Stockholm. And but today I'm going to present this uh, tutorial on bench press, which is a project that I started in my postdoc in at the University of Basel. So like three years ago, and it's a joint work with my uh, supervisor or previous supervisor, Juicy Moffa and uh, Jack Capers. So it's a it's a software for running and developing structure learning algorithms for graphical models. And I uh, think uh, for you who know who have worked in uh, graphical models or structure learning, you know it's a quite interesting field. But uh, when it comes to comparing the algorithms, it can be quite hard. So this is a solution to that problem. I will show you how this works and uh, yeah, first give some slides on some background on the software, and then I will show you how you use it in practice. Okay, so first some background, so uh, on graphical models. So in graphical models, you have a distribution and then and then an associated set of random variables. And what you do is that you take the random variables and you put them as nodes in the graph, and then you can read off conditional independent statements, um, like separation in the graph. So there are different kinds of graphs, for example, undirected graphs or directed acyclic graphs. Um, and they, uh, the separation um, notion is different in these kind of graphs. So they encode different um, condition independent statements. So when you have a distribution in a graph that uh, re reveals some of the condition independences, you say that the graph is Markov with respect to the distribution. This is essentially a generalization of the Markov chain, like you see here. Okay, so so how do we get this, uh, or where do they arise, the graphical models? So one way is that if you have a distribution, any distribution, you can always take take the full graph with all edges there, and that will always be Markov. Uh, the, any distribution will always be Markov with respect to that. But if you have a, a Gaussian distribution, you can get more informative uh, graphical model. So what you do is that you take the uh, covariance matrix, you invert it, you get the precision matrix. And then whenever you have a non-zero element in the precision matrix, you can uh, create an edge in a graph. In a graph. And then that the, the distribution will be marked with respect to that graph. Yeah, so that's how we can find a graphical model in the graph uh, if you know the distribution and that it's uh, uh, normal. Uh, it's a Gaussian distribution. I think this is old news. So, but uh, the problem that I'm dealing with in this program is when you don't know the distribution, you have a set of data and you want to infer the graph of the graphical models, gra graphical model from the data. So this is something called causal discovery of the graph is. Uh, a bag or just structure learning. So this is a is an MP hard problem in general, but there are uh, some main strategies that you do to find some approximate solutions instead. So the first uh, common approach is the score based, uh, like the score based methods, uh, where you define a, a score or function over the set of graphs that you're interested in, and you try to optimize that score. Uh, and then you also have the constraint-based uh, methods where you infer the edges in the graph by hypo hypothesis testing. Uh, and then you have the hybrid methods where you restrict the search space of the score-based um, method by a hybrid by a constraint-based method in the beginning. That's one approach, common approach. And there are also other, some other approaches coming that arise lately also. But these are, I would say, these are the main. Uh, main strategies. So there are quite many algorithms out there for different kind of graphs, but like undirected, directed, and chain graphs, but um, and uh, usually there, the software is also available, so that's a good thing. But um, if you want to compare algorithms, you have, say you have a Developed a new algorithm and you want to compare it to the existing existing ones. This can still be quite challenging. Some of you might have noted. Uh, 
because even though you have so here's a list of problems that can arise so even though um the algorithms are in the same program la programming language uh, or for, at first they can be in different program programming languages and then even though they are in the same language they can have different formats because people develop these algorithms independently uh, so that can be hard to put into the same place and then also if you want to compare many algorithms with many uh, parameter settings you might want to do this in parallel so you need some structure for that yeah and then you need to structure the results uh, and even though you know this then how to compare to algorithms there are different metrics also and uh, there are many aspects that to take care about take care of when you do these kind of things and if you implemented this it would take you a lot of time but this is what happened to me in, in my PhD when I developed algorithms and uh, then I thought that it would be nice to do some program that could handle this for yeah once and for all yeah so bench press is a solution to these problems I would say um, and it's a snake make work workflow I would just leave the snake make part just to the next slide so uh, so the idea with the bench press is that all the algorithms are run uh, run in different uh, separate containers obtainer containers so they can be implemented in different languages and then it if you want to do a bench if you want to benchmark some or some, an algorithm um, then you would need to sample date uh, a graphical model and a date the, the data and you would you would need to run the structure learning algorithm for example and uh, all these parts are are implemented at different in as different modules in this system so you have the graph you can sample graphs uh, the parameter for a graphical model and the data then the structure learning algorithms you run them on that on the data and then you do the benchmarking and all this is uh, set up um, and then you can run this all the algorithms in parallel thanks to thanks to this the design and also to the functionalities of snake, snake make and a nice part here is that it uh, if you run an algorithm uh, once then you can the the, the um, output will be saved in a way like in a uniform way a unified way uh, and how you in, uh, how you run this is or the interface for the user is uh, a json file so you don't need a, uh, any programming to run uh, to run the algorithms actually so i will show you more how this works so short about snake make so snake make is a workflow management system uh, that is used in bioinformatics some of you might know about it already but it has it's very popular it has about seven, seven citations a week and thousands of stars at github it's a really popular uh, program or software in, in this field so and i'm not into bioinformatics but there you have a lot of uh, you have pipelines of data that you want to process and run algorithms in the data in different ways so that's almost the same thing as you have in in the benchmarking scenario that I'm dealing with here. SnakeMake has like its own language; it's by, uh, built on Python, and it's a rule-based language. So it's like you each rule has an uh, input output file and output file. So you request an output file, and it will re the rule will itself request an input file. So you will get like a bag of of requests like this. That's also why you can make stuff in parallel. Appainer is a container, ma uh, container management system uh, that is used in high com performance computing. It's like Docker, but this has the um, um, benefit that it doesn't require the, uh, as much um, privileges as uh, Docker does, which requires root, I think. So you can run this on servers. Okay. So that was some introduction. And um, now I thought I will go to, through the documentation, show you how this works. So first I will uh, show how to install, install software. And then you will see the, some modules. And then I will show you how, how the JSON file is uh, 
that is working, and then some examples. Oh, okay, so here's the documentation. Uh, so we go to the installation part. So, uh, so there is actually no real installation for the bench press as such. You just need the snake make and you need apptainer in your computer. And apptainer is uh, requiring um, Linux. So, uh, so if you want to run this on Mac or Windows, you would run, need to run uh, you would need to run it through a Docker container. That's how I do it on this Mac that I'm using. So otherwise, if you have Linux, you install SnakeMake and AppTainer. SnakeMake can be installed with Anaconda. And for now, it's just working on the AMD64 processor. But um, yeah, I didn't um, make it work for the ARM64 for the new Mac yet, but that's in the pipe. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I will show some modules here to the right or to the left. So there are different modules for as you see here for sampling graphs, uh, parameters, the, yeah, the data, the algorithm, running algorithms, and then to ev evaluate the result. So here are some of the, or here are the modules for generating graphs. So for example, we can go to this part, BD graph, graph sim. This is actually an interface to the graph sim function from the BD graph uh, uh, library. Uh, so here's a JSON snippet, how you, how you use this one. And um, so the idea is to not recode so much in, or do something that, uh, it's already done, so the parameters will have will be the same as in the original um, package. Yeah. yeah, you see some information here that it, this is from the BDGraph package. Here's the version that is R, as you said, and the documentation. And in the documentation, you can see what all these uh, what the actual keys in this JSON uh, snippet means. Mm -hmm. And here's also some reference. So here you can learn about. Yeah, how the modules work. And similar for parameters, um, there, are, there are modules for generating parameters for uh, undirected graphs, graphical models for binary basin networks, structural equation models, uh, decomposable models, and so And yeah also for generating data. You can also put your own uh, fixed data set also, you don't have to generate. And here are the, um, all the algorithms so far. There are like 50 of them, something like this right now from different packages. So we can go to maybe Gobnilp, which is the algorithm by James Cousins. Yeah, so it's the same as for graphs. There is some description about the algorithm. Some of the fields are described, which are not in the uh, docs, they are described here. And then some example how to how to use this. Show now how to how to how the the structure of the JSON configuration file looks like. So the JSON file is the interface to bench press. And it looks something like this. Here's a study where I compare uh, the PC algorithm um, to the dual PC algorithm, which should be an improvement of PC algorithm that my uh, previous supervisor did, Juicy Moffa and Jack Coopers and Enrico uh, Giudice did. So, so here I compare it on a. Um, um, Structural Gaussian structural equation model, but I will get back to that later. So just for the structure, it's like first there is a, it's a one section for the actual benchmarking setup, which is here. You set up the data, uh, how the data is sampled, and how to evaluate the models. But I come back to that, and then there is another section with all the resources, and here is the 
here's where all the modules are defined. So each, so in the data section, we have the IID model for module, for example. Here in the graph section, we have the PCR grand uh, uh, module, which I showed before, with some parameterization. And here are the algorithms. Here's the PC algorithm from the PCL package. And with an uh, parameter setting like this. So each, so this is a JSON object in a list. And each object has an ID, which you use uh, in your, um, where you define the actual study up here. So if I go, go back to here. So here is the, how the data is sampled. So as a graph, you use some, you use the algorithm with this ID, avnegs 4 p 80 So it's something that I just invented because it's, it's, a, it's a DAG with the average number of neighbors is four and number of nodes are 80. And I defined that down here. So it's an instantiation of the PCR grand DAG uh, module. And then similarly for the parameters, there's something, an ID that I call SEM that is defined down here. And then for the data is IID data that I uh, standardized after about 300 samples. And then I repeat this uh, for a, a range of uh, seed numbers from one to 10. So it's like a sample, it's like a, if you see this as a three-dimensional hierarchical model, you have, it's like three realization of realizations of, uh, or 10 realizations of graph parameters and data for different seeds. Yeah, so that's how the data is generated for this particular study. And then there's an evaluation section where you're, there are all the different uh, uh, mo uh, modules for um, evaluating the, the results. So in, for the, in this, for example, the benchmarks module, you can uh, generate, you can do the timing and you can generate true and false positive plots. And so then you can plot the true graphs uh, or the estimated graphs and so. There are also modules for MCMC uh, methods. You can plot the trajectories. So I think I go to the, so if you have any questions, just let me know directly. Yeah. Otherwise I just go to the, I go to the example studies here. So here's again the, or I go to another, sorry. Yeah, so here's again an example of a, um, Gaussian Bayesian networks network where the average number of uh, neighbors is four and the number of nodes is 20. It's a structural equation model. The data is uh, standardized. And here are the modules that are used. And I want to show some of the outputs. So this is uh, this is the adjacency matrix of one of the DAGs that was, was sampled. So the good part about these plots is that the, all the information for how the, how the DAG or the graph was generated is found in the, in the header here. So this was generated from the PCL grand DAG function. And here with max parents is five, number of nodes is 20, the average number of, um, neighbors is four and all the parameters that you can give in the uh, in this random function and yeah you one need to check the docs to know uh, to understand them uh, you can also get uh, estimates like this so then you have um, so that was the true graph underlying graph for the data and now for the 
uh, yeah, for the whole, I mean, the underlying graph, and here is for the whole. So this is, that would correspond to the first line here. And then it's, uh, here's information about how the parameters were sampled in this particular estimate, and also how the data was sampled. Uh, and to the left is the, the parameters for the, for the algorithm that was, uh, that was run. So I think this is quite good part because usually when you when you do these kind of benchmarks and plots, you store them in different uh, folders and uh, with different namings and you try to come up with different systems. And uh, then when you come back after like some month or so, then you forgot how, to, how you did it and you have to rerun everything again. At least that's what uh, usually happened to me. So I think um, having all the information in the plots is, uh, should be, I think it, it helped me a lot. Uh, so you can essentially go to R in this case and do this without bench press and get exactly the same results with this information. So it's only one problem. If there are too many parameters, then would, that would fit into the <laughs> into the picture, then it would be a problem. But so far, that didn't happen. Yeah, then you can also do this kind of plots. Um, yeah, when you have, you can also plot the true, the the true and the estimated graphs in the same plot. So the uh, false positives are in red, the false negatives are in blue, and the the true ones or the correct estimates, estimated edges are in black. Mm. Let's see, and you can do the same what in the graph like this. So this plot thing is from the uh, B and Learn package. Um, here is actually it's a chain graph. This is actually the pattern graph, the graph that you get from a DAG if you just keep the the direction of the B structures and make everything else uh, undirected. Then you get graphs like this. So the colors are still the same. Red ones are wrong, and blue ones are the missing. Um, and then you can also do timing, timing so the. Uh, of the algorithms for different parameters, you get all the information here. You it, um, each color corresponds to one algorithm. Then there are, they can have different parameter settings that are like here. Here, this is the red one. Is for example the uh, fast read, read the equivalent search with the big score, and then you have different uh, uh, settings for that, those ones, and you get those here. Uh, and then you can also plot uh, true and false positives. So like this, uh, each little dot here is the result. For example, the green part is the iterative search algorithm. So each dot corresponds to the result oh, sorry, of one data set and graph. And they are summarized in by median values here and here are some here are the percentiles. So you you want to be in the top left corner in this kind of plot. And you can plot the SHD structural hamming distance. Um, F1 score. Here I do it just for the undirected version of the graph. Mm. There are also other kind of plots that you can do. You can plot some properties of the graph, like the graph density and the maximum in degrees. You can do scatter plots like this from the GGALI package. It's an R package for doing scatter plots. And one nice part is that you can do, you can really put many algorithms quite easy, you can put many algorithms in the same plot like this, even though this looks a bit too much, but this is a good property. So now I will show you how to run this uh, yeah, with the bench press commands. Um, and I will show you how to, uh, how, the rest, how the files are structured and uh, how we can change uh, some parameters and 
get new results. And then I will show you how to add a new algorithm from the docs. From, so here I, I will take the PC algorithm from the Tetra library. And then I, then I think I would, I thought we could take a five minutes break where you can try to start. Because my initial plan was that you should uh, install and try to run this uh, in the end. So uh, for you who can do that now, I think the the connection is not that fast here at, uh, at the university. So maybe you can download everything, but. Um, those who are online might be able to do it. So I think then we take a five minute break so you can also ask questions. Um, and then I will show you how to uh, develop algorithms here. And then the rest of the time I save for you to, to try this by yourself. But uh, maybe this is not possible now because I, I thought it would be easier to download, faster to download. So maybe we, we will quit a bit earlier. But those who can download it and maybe already did it can do it and do this challenge that I have, exercise that I have. Okay, but now I um, I will show how to do this, how to run the configuration file. So the config, config file for the study that I showed, it looks like this. So I want to show, I want to run this study that I, that I showed, for which I showed the results. So let's see. So since I have, a, I'm using a Mac, and I don't have a Snake Mac installed here, I'm using the Docker way to do this. So this is also found on the on the documentation. So what I basically do is that I head into the BenchPress directory, and then I mount the bench press directory in the Docker container. And I run this official snake make uh, Docker image. And I set the working directory to the place where I, to the, to the snake, to the um, bench press directory in the Docker container. So this is, can be, sounds technical, but the only thing you need to do is to run it like this, wait a little while. And then there are some warnings here. That shouldn't be a problem. And then you go to the usage section. And copy this line. So it, this is a standard snake make command where you, you need to provide how many cores you want to use. So here I choose all four cores. And you need to say that it's going to use singularity, which is the former version or the former name of Aptainer. And then you specify the config file, which is in this uh, location or in the bench press uh, directory. And then you run it like this. So now SnakeMake is building a DAG of jobs. I think this takes the more pipes you have on the um, in the results folder of BenchPress or in general in SnakeMake, this will take longer time because it will check which files are already generated. So I already ran this before prior to this tutorial. Um, so everything is already there. And that's why you just see some jobs here. Otherwise, it would be like 300, uh, 400 runs or jobs to do. Um, but it's it will anyway generate the the last figure, so that's what it's doing here. So now it's done, and then you go to the uh, bench press directory. Mm. Go to results. Then it's a folder called output, and then here are the results stored for. Um, all the modules that was uh, specific or used in the config file. So if we go to the benchmarks module, 
I said it, the, the result would be stored in the folder called example. So I go there. And then here are the output, all the outputs that are generated from that module. So for example, here are the timings that we saw before. Um, here are the true and false positive. Um, yeah, everything that I showed and the, some more results are here. So that was this SHD. So then you can go to the, to this, uh, to the config file and change some value, for example. So you can go here and change the, remove this thing, taboo, uh, some parameter to the taboo uh, algorithm. Now we have to look how it looked before. Let's see, let's go to this one here. Then we run it again. So then the the file will obviously be updated. So this output outputs everything that snake make outputs and also what the algorithm themselves gives us output and there are four cores so it will be a bit messy when you see it like this and here you can see the percentage that has been done so far Yeah, so here's the new graph where something was removed from here. I think it was in this place or here. So you can just change parameter values like this. That was the that was the point of this. Okay, so now I will show how to add in the PC algorithm from the Tetrad or the console command. Um, uh, software so what you do is that you go to the you go to the documentation go to algorithms and find find that rhythm here you see all then you just copy this part this json snippet you go to the json file and you have to write the name of the module, uh, Tetrad, you see, all. That was the name, I think. And then you take the ID here. you put it in the module that you are interested in let's put it in the benchmarks module and then run again so maybe you notice here that some some of the algorithms have several values uh, for some parameters, so that's those are the values that actually makes the the lines in the rock type curves. So now for this algorithm, it was will not be a curve; it will just be one value. 
like this. Um, so then this PCL, so now there are two PCL algorithms, one from the DN, um, DN learn package is this one, and here's the one from the Tetrad package, and you'll find it here. So it's a good thing that it seems to do almost the same as the as the one from the BN learn package. Okay, so yeah, that's how you do it. You just go to the documentation, copy a snippet, and then you can change the values that you like. So, so now I thought you could uh, we could take a five minutes break, so you can check the documentation in your computer. Maybe try to install if you are remote or here. And so, and then we then after the, this short break, uh, I will show how to add a new algorithm. Uh, are we able to compare learning algorithms, for example, neural networks, or is Benchpress specifically for evaluating data generation algorithms? Uh, I mean, it's for graphical graphical models evaluating the the structure learning algorithms. Yeah, it's not for neural networks. Okay. Uh, uh, you uh, you mean you just have the data and you want yeah. to estimate the graph? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because my problem is that oftentimes I just don't have the underlying graph and I want to, let's say, compare different algorithms on that specific data just to see what comes out of them and also have some metrics, right, that uh, that, that quantify how good the, the graph discovery is for each one of the algorithms. Yeah. Uh, what you can, so there is support for just putting your data there and running mm -hmm. algorithms. Uh, what you can do now is to, let's see, I have this somewhere um where do i have it um, so what you can do is that you can run and then you get this you can get the adjacency matrices that plots mm -hmm. or you get them as uh, um json file uh, i mean the csv files so yeah. that will uh, uh i can show here how the yeah, the file format. So you get everything. So a graph is represented by like this. Mm -hmm. So what you get, you you put your you put your data set there, and then you get out files like this, and you also can get plots as I showed before there. That's really cool. And another question that I have is that some of these algorithms, right? You can see like FCI or or PC. I'm guessing that you can pass like a skeleton before or some type of domain expertise, right? Is this something that you're you're thinking about or yeah, for some for example, this is implemented for the for the Cobnilp. Um I think James Carson is using that functionality. It's okay. um it's implemented here. So constraints. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I do now that I, is that I put the constraints for this algorithm, I put it in a file in mm -hmm. a specific place, and then it reads that one and uses it in the algorithm. So. That's really cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. So here are on the same on the same thing the topic. There are different data scenarios that you can have. You can have when the data is fixed. You can have when you know the baseline graph and the data. And then you can have uh, mm, fixed graph, fixed parameters, fixed graphical models, and you just generate data from a fixed graphical model. Or you can have fixed graph and you generate the parameters for the graphical models, and then you generate the data, or you generate everything as I have here. That's, this is what I showed now when you generate the graphs, parameters, and the data. So it's like a three dimensional random variable in a sense. Okay, so now I will uh, show how to add the new algorithm to Benchpress. So I choose to add the GRASP um, algorithm, which is a new one uh, from last year, I think. And I'm going to call the module GRASP. And then we're going to put it into the config file. And then I'm going to also put some meta information and put it in the documentation. So there is a section in documentation for how to add new modules. So each module has this structure. It has a snake make rule, it has some template script here in R. There's also one in Python that we would use. And there is some JSON schema 
that it's you can also use when you publish algorithms and there is some meta information about the uh, algorithm that will be on the documentation you can put the bib test file and then you have can put some provide some information but to to make something just run you just need to add the, or change some line in the rule file as you will see and also in the script so we go down to you can add graphs parameters or data modules uh, algorithm modules mcmc modules and also okay evaluation modules are a bit harder at the moment but we go here so what you do is that you um, you make a cop you you copy a template like this it looks like this you copy that one to uh, to the fold to the bench press folder like this uh, you call the new folder the what you want to call it grasp in this case this and then you will find this one in the folder where all the other ones are you already have these ones um, and then you go to first to the rule so we want to run the grasp algorithm and that requires that you have the grasp or the grasp installed on your computer or that you run it through a docker container so here i already prepared a um, docker image where the causal learn package is installed so it will be here uh, so it's here learn and zero point one point three point three and we can remove all this so i already prepared this one from before so what it contains is just it's actually here this is this is how the docker image looks like so i just use this python 3.11.4 bullseye and then i do this thing so i already uploaded this to docker hub and then i go to the script see here is the one that i already prepared but let's go to the to the new script so this one is here so from the documentation you can also see the the uh, the template script that I provided. So it looks something like this. Mm, so here is just the template. The template algorithm is just something that randomly, randomly generates um, a graph, like no connection to the data at all. It I have put how to read the data though, so you can you read the data like this, and you can read the the random seed here also, and then you save. The time you have some timing and you say the JSON, you say the JSON matrix like this, and the number of tests if that's applicable, it's not here. Um, and then there's some timeout functionality, so you which is already coded here also. So you can actually set how long for how long you want to run an algorithm until it just stops. Then if it's implemented in the algorithm that it that it's like it can give you the best results so far, then that could be used. Otherwise, it would just give you no, nothing. But this can be useful when you have large uh, um, benchmarks for several hours, but but you don't you have some time limit. So what I will do now is to uh, change this part. How to yeah how the graph is estimated. So to do that, you need to know how the causal uh, how the grasp is working. So you go to the so here's the causal learn package. You go to search methods. Uh, you go to grasp usage and here you see that you need to import grasp like this for example mm, so it's this one you need to put that there uh, and then you need to 
So you can run it with just the, the data or you can put some parameters. Mm, so now I will, I will just use the max P parameter. And then what it returns is a graph with a specific encoding. So that's what you can find here. So for example, yeah, there's some encoding for directed edges and for, uh, for undirected edges. So I already figured out how that would, uh, was working, saved it in another. Yeah, in this one, so I can just copy that now, not to worry too much with that. So I copy this part here. So I replace this part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can get access to the to the variables from the JSON JSON file through this object or dictionary, uh, the SnakeMac objects, and then there's a wildcards dictionary, and then you can get access like this. So, so uh, you need to go here and define this in the config file. So let's go here. Now, as I did before. When I took just from documentation, I, you can just, now that we have a new algorithm called GRASP, you put GRASP here, and then you, um, put the information. And then I, this I already pre prepared, but let's do it like this. So I call this this version my grasp. I said I use I define this max p parameter, and I, this is the max number of uh, parents that the estimated graph can have. So it said it can be one, two, or six, and I don't use any timeout. Now to run this, I need to put my grasp somewhere like there. And then run here. So here now, since I added a new algorithm, there will be some jobs. So the 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 rule is called uh, grasp, and it was and we have three data sets. We generated three data sets, and there were three parameters: one, two, and six for each data set. So that's why it will run grasp nine times. Uh, and then it will also do some other things here. So. Now we will, yeah, we can wait for this thing. But in the meanwhile, I can uh, prepare what has to be done for the documentation. So there's a docs file here where you can put some information about the algorithm. For example, here, this is the information that was provided on the homepage. So I just take this one. Save it there in the docs.rst. And then there's an info.json. Here I put where I put some information also grasp. It's 0 0.1.3.3. And uh, it's causal. Causal. Learn. And then I put an URL to the to this thing. I also put the URL to the doc, docs directly. And then I set here what kind of graphs are estimated. It's a CP DAG, I think, in this case. And then I put the language. Um, Then I can go to the, you can also put the bibtesh file for the references. So you can get from Google Scholar or something. I already had it here.
like this. In the schema, you can put the max p. Here's the example that will be shown in the documentation on two, six. Um, you can also fill out here. Uh, and then you render the, docu the docs like this. And then you go to the local local version of the documentation. And then you will find grasp here. So this is how you publish a new a new algorithm. So now it, there will be all the information. Provided here with a, with some reference and also the, how to how to run it. So once you did this, uh, you can just push it to to the, or make a pull request and push it to to GitHub. Let's see how far this came. Okay, so it ended. Then let's go to see what it produced. So here is the idea was my grasp, and it turned out to be quite seemed to be quite good. It's almost in, in has the best median value, also one of the best yeah best results on a specific data set. But this is for a small and twenty nodes example. But anyway, this is how. Uh, how fast it is to add, uh, add a new module and you can also if you if you want to run there's also the possibility to run um algorithms on your own computer or that are uh, installed on a conda environment then you just uh, change this part to none um, and then you can specify the name of the conda environment so then one can develop you can have your algorithm existing algorithm from another Git repository, and then you can connect to that one into BenchPress really quick. Okay, so now uh, my idea was that uh, to make this a bit interactive, those who already had installed this, uh, the, the software, uh, you can do this challenge where you add the GS algorithm from the course of learn, it should be sim it's similar to adding what I did now, um, and uh, yeah, try to update the documentation. Um, yes, yeah, I did now, and then try to make it work. Then there is another challenge which you can do in both R or Python, uh, which is to improve this new alg template that I did um, for estimating an undirected graphical model. Um, so it's a hint here how you estimate an undirected uh, Gaussian graphical model that you can estimate the precision matrix. And uh, there are also some, um, you can also, when you add a new algorithm, you can also use this. Uh, um, I have some, I have a predefined um, JSON file where there are new, uh, graphs, parameter, data, algorithm, and CNC algorithms where you can just go in and alter here the uh, algorithm. Yeah, so yeah, so the rest of the session is to, to try to do this challenge. And, uh, and but the tutorial is done for my side, but otherwise you can, I will stay here for questions and yeah. Uh, that you try to do this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, post it on the web. Yeah, so, yeah, so you had a question. Uh, can you take it on the, the screen? Um, so, uh, I was following your tutorial you have in the read the docs on the non Docker method. So, using Linux machine, installed Aptainer, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting an error showing that the container from Aptainer has 
uh, lower than Python 3.9 version, but it's running at 3.11, which seems to be the same one that you were using per what you showed. And the only thing I can find that is different is on the docs, you recommend to use, um, what was it, uh, Snakemake version 7.30.1. Yeah. But the latest one is, or one we have installed is 7.31.0, which I think is the latest. So okay. I was just wondering if maybe that was the issue. Maybe it's the issue. I, I'm using this, I require actually the, actually, I'm using almost the latest version of Snakemake now, but that was just because they fixed a bug. Uh, for using Conda with Snake Make. Gotcha. But otherwise, it would work from uh, 7.2 or 20 or something like this. Okay, cool. So, but there is still this check, but maybe if you update it, it will be, it will work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So just... Okay. Okay. So, another thing I can mention also is that you can produce all these plots, like the rock type curves that I showed, but you can also get the raw information in so the raw information is in csv files so then you can produce your own plots also so there are, for each algorithm all the information is there and there's also another file with where everything is joined join all the algorithm outputs are joined like this so if you're not happy with these plots that i did you can do also your own So another feature I can also show is that, for example, here in the in the study when I compared PC to PC dual PC, um, so that's what you have here. So the red is dual PC and PC is the blue one. There is a flag in the benchmarks module that you can put. You can set the you can view the seed numbers for the estimates. So this is the estimate of PC, is an estimate from PC, uh, on the PC algorithm on the data set with C number three. And in this way, and it's the same, uh, for example, and also for, if you look at the Timing, you can see some outliers. You can see for the, out, the outliers, you can see the seed number. And then this way you can go in and inspect what kind of graph uh, created that uh, data set. And then you can see like, okay, this, this kind of graphs, that's where my algorithm is good or it's uh, worse. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So this was the tutorial. I hope maybe you could try out the this exercise uh, or that you could have a look at the um, documentation at least and maybe you um, yeah hope you can want to use bench press in the future thanks <laughs>